thing with the big ideas to understand from the student is you should be able to understand what psychology is and understand whether or not it's an. So we define psychology as um, the scientific study of behavior and the mental process. We talked about in class how behavior can be broken down into observable acts. And we talked about mental process when you break down that definition into things like memory, your thought process, and problem solving. We talked a little bit about which one may be easier to gather research on, and we saw that behavior, for the most part, a lot of times is easy to gather research. When you're talking about the mental process, however, that can be a little tricky. How are people thinking? What are their thoughts? So when you're conducting research in psychology, sometimes we, we had a pretty good discussion about how um, it could be a pretty hard science to is psychology a science? Well, first we talked about what science was. It's a branch of knowledge or study dealing with facts that are supported often by data. And you need to experiment. So we talked about whether or not you're going to put a person in a test tube and is that exactly how you're going to study them. Well, it's hard to say. Um, certainly, it is a science. Um, Wilhelm Bunt was the first person who conducted the first uh, science experiment. 1979. However, for a long time, um, early opinions, many people believe it didn't have enough scientific backing. It wasn't science-based. Um, over the past hundred years, however, psychology has become more and more research-based. Many researchers that we are going to talk about try to provide theories to explain people's behavior, Kitchener, Pavlov, Rogers, Darwin, Freud, etc. We will learn throughout the year. But today is classified as a science um, as long as it has I would say the data to, to back your, your, your theory or your um, I talked about how I'm going to break apart the origins of psychology. Um, the origins of psychology comes out of philosophy and physiology. We talked a little bit about what philosophy is. Philosophy is the study of knowledge, reality, and existence. Who are we? Why are we here? And it also stems out of physiology which is the study of the human mind. So early philosophers and people who studied um, human body started the question, well, if why are we here, particularly maybe why do you behave a certain way and I behave maybe a particularly different way? So out of the origins of these two fields came psychology. And I did break it apart into five big areas. Prehistoric time period, which lacked science. We also talked about the ancient Greek which also lacked a lot of scientific data. The philosophical thought, which was more John Locke, which lacked um, scientific data as well. Psychology was created in 1879 by William Bunch because now science is back in the field. And then lastly, we have more of the contemporary stages of thought, which are you can find under the approaches and perspective PowerPoint. Okay, so I talked a little bit about pre scientific um, time period. A lot of scopes were found. Psychologists thought that for many, many years, psychology maybe didn't develop until the Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates. But what they're finding in the prehistoric time period is skulls are being found with small holes in them. They called it trimpanning, which they believe that maybe they used ice picks or um, picks to tap at the skull and to try and uncover maybe why a person had a seizure or behaved a certain way. These are found in India and China, and they believed um, to have been a surgical operation exploring people's behaviors associated with seizures. So the study of the mind dates back to the prehistoric time period. This is not tested, but however, it might be something that's kind of cool and a part of history. The time period you now is the ancient Greeks. Who is who? I usually remember this as Spa, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Socrates and Plato believed in dualism. They both believed that the mind and the body were separate, and you're born with the knowledge you have. You don't gather it out of experiences. Aristotle, on the other hand, the student of Plato, disagreed with their ideas. He believed that the mind is not separate from the body, okay? that knowledge is not pre-existing. A lot of our knowledge we get through um, our experience. It then flash forward many years. Many years went by with little accountability on the field of psychology until the philosophers started popping up. About 1500 CE, you have Rene Descartes. 
René Descartes was French. He believed also in many of the thoughts of Socrates and Plato. He believed that the mind and the body were separate. This is dualism. The way I remember it, Descartes, dualism. Both begin with D. Francis Bacon believed in Aristotle, and he believed that many people learn through experiences, which brings us back to monoism. He examined patterns of learned behavior. Um, if a person does this, they're more prone to not do it again because of some experience they, that they learn. Um, and then this brings us to John Locke, born with the blank slate. He believed in Francis Bacon and Aristotle, which is monoism. John Locke believed in empiricalistic data, uh, that you needed data to back your evidence. So I know I asked you in class to take out a chart and kind of sort the different forward. Um, now that John Locke really believed we needed um, evidence to support the field, the first person that came about and really supported it with evidence was Wilhelm Wundt, the first cycle experiment. He was Wilhelm Wundt. It was in 1879 in Germany. Um, you have Hall and Frederick were his two were witnesses to the first experiment. His goal was to study consciousness. He wanted to measure the time lag between hearing a ball hit a platform and somebody pressing a ding telegraph key. And what he found out was it usually takes a person one tenth of a second to understand the ball hit the platform to somebody hitting a key. Um, why is this considered the first psych you know, why is this considered the first experiment? Was considered the first experiment because now you have measurable data. It takes one time for an average person to respond to it. And then they looked at maybe particularly why does it take longer for one person to respond to something than another? And hence a lot of exploration was done in this field on consciousness. It also sparked the idea of structuralism, which is measuring the process. Here's kind of a quick picture of what the experiment looks like. And this sparks the idea of structuralism. Edward Bradford Titchener was a student of Wilhelm Bunt. Wilhelm Bunt is the father of psychology we just spoke about. He believed, well, um, Edward Bradford Titchener believed in the school of structuralism, which he was interested in the structural elements of the human mind. He wanted to understand how the specific structures work and that impacted the behavior. In order to get at the specific structural elements, he believed that you could use introspection, looking inward, and reported your experiences with that. So people were asked, what are your immediate sensations, images, and feelings with a particular object or item? And we took in class, okay, when you see a rose, things particularly come to mind. When I had the metronome go, to what particular thoughts kind of came to mind. And we talked about whether or not this is something that is a factual science. After Kitchener, William James said, I really don't believe in structuralism. I believe in functionalism, which is a school of psychology that focused on the mental and behavioral process function as a whole. He's also known as the father of American psychology. He thought that structuralism was foolish, and that every single person is. So kind of looking at the two schools of thought, um, there are two intellectual schools of thought regarding the science of psychology. Structuralism was led by Bunt and Edward Tischner, focused on analyzing the consciousness and the basic elements, using introspection, the careful systematic observation of one's consciousness. Functionalism, on the other hand, by William James, focuses on the understanding of the role of consciousness and how it helps organisms to adapt to the environment and led to investigation of mental testing, developmental patterns, and sexual differences. About um, different people, kind of recapping Wilhelm Bunt. I know you guys probably took um, notes on page 20, 27 and 28. Wilhelm Bunt opened the first psychological laboratory in Germany, conducted the first psychological experiment, and he measured timeline. We looked at G. Stanley Hall. He used introspection. He believed um, he was a system of Wilhelm Bunt. Okay, he was the first APA, American Psychological President, and he was the founder of the APA. He also opened the first lab in the United States. Titchener introduced the early school of structuralism. He was the one that came up with the experiment with the rose. Describe how you feel. Describe how you feel using introspection. And then he sought measures to the mind. William James wrote the first psychological textbook. He had a student named Mary Culkins, 
who was the first female president of the American Psychological Association, and he also believed in functionalism. Sigmund Freud, we'll talk a great deal about, I know we covered him in class, um, believed in the power of the unconscious mind, things that are um, deep down within us, these childhood experiences might shape our behavior. He used dream analysis, and he was the first person to study personality. He created the first therapy, so if you want to go to therapy, called psychoanalysis. He emphasized the way emotional responses to childhood experience later affect our lives. Watson Skinner, two big behaviorists, they studied reinforcement and operant conditioning. They are known as, uh, they believe in behaviorism. Um, they studied the psychological science, she focused on observation. Um, they were behaviorists, and Watson's known for the little Albert Express. Marathon Rogers, happy, happy um, love. They believed in humanism. They cared about meeting our needs for love and acceptance. They emphasized on personal growth. They are known as humanists. And then a couple of the people that are on there that you want to make sure you know, Mary Culkins was the first woman to be allowed to study psychology at the graduate level. However, when she was there, all the men dropped out. Um, she, was a, she finished and she pretty much outscored most men, but however, she was denied a degree from Harvard. She is known really and particularly nowadays for the early studies of Dorothy Dix was an American reformer. She's somebody who advocated for mental health. Um, she really wanted um, better treatment for women, mental health treatment for women. Mary Floyd Washburn, the way I remember this one, is Mary was doing her wash, and she was the first female to get a PhD in psychology. So she was studying and doing the wash. That's all I remember this one. She was the second female to get the APA president, American Psychological Association. Charles Darwin, we talked about, uh, he's the person that came up with the evolutionary perspective. He believes to trace our past down because they're important. Ivan Pab, also the last person I want you guys to know, he studied classical conditioning. He did win the Nobel Peace Prize um, for his belief in uh, classical conditioning with salivating dogs. Um, he paired a dog, a bell with food, and the dog was salivated. Soon, just hearing the bell, the dog started salivating. And we are going to get in more detail with Ivan Pavlov, but he is a behaviorist as well. We learn through it. And Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget is somebody who studied development, the stages of development, known as a cognitive psychologist, wanting to know when you should have the skills at each stage of development in order to obtain a certain task or be able to do it. And that is it. You should be able to define psychology after listening to this. You should be able to explain if psychology is a science. You should be able to identify and describe some of the major historical figures in psychology. And then hopefully you're beginning to grasp. Students should be able to explain how philosophical perspectives have developed, developed the field of psychology today.